Manchester United finished their 3-1 defeat against Arsenal with Harry Maguire and Johnny Evans as their centre-back pairing, the same two that Leicester City had four seasons ago. It's an example of the stagnation at Old Trafford alright, and not something you could possibly imagine at Manchester City, Liverpool, even Arsenal these days. Ex-club captain Gary Neville berated the Glazer ownership on Sky Sports after yet another away defeat for their lack of investment, and yet it's well known to everyone that those at the top of the tree aren't particularly invested in the club. But is that the biggest reason for Manchester United's failure to catch up with rivals in the last few years? Really? This is why the Glazers have set Eric Ten Hag up to fail. The Glazers are a polarising topic within the world of English football. Ask any Manchester United fan and they'll tell you that the US businessmen are parasites proceeding over a slow demise of a once great institution. Yet to some, that's an excuse. And it's true that the numbers don't quite stack up. Chelsea have been handing out eight year contracts for the past three transfer windows like they're totally the norm, and so they have the highest net spend in the Premier League over the last five years. Yet second on the list sit Manchester United, whose fans regularly call for more investment from their owners. It's not quite as simple as just going out and spending more money though. United have spent huge sums in the past 10 years, and that's thanks to the commercial deals that the club has brought in. United have shelled out £50 million or more for a player 15 times in their history. Neville pointed out on Sky at the weekend that with the revenue the club brings in, his former side should be high up on any net spend list, but it's hard to argue that his former employers have spent the money well. Paul Pogba is still the club's record signing ahead of Anthony, who cost £80 million. The Brazilian has managed 11 goals and assists in 47 games at United, which isn't a particularly great return, and he regularly starts ahead of Jadon Sancho, who's failed to impress too, after moving for a similar amount of money. Between Anthony and Sancho on the record signing list is the much maligned Harry Maguire. Below them are Romelu Lukaku and Angel Di Maria, two big money buys who left shortly after joining and whom United were lucky to recoup big fees for from clubs on the continent. Next on the list after that are two players at different ends of their careers, Rasmus Highland and Casemiro, with one thing in common, United paid far more than the going rate for either. Bruno Fernandes and Luke Shaw cost a lot of money and they've both been hits at Old Trafford. Anthony Martial and Fred cost £100 million combined and the former has a Ballon d'Or clause in his contract, which just now seems wild. You can argue that the Red Devils had to pay a United tax for some of these players, that clubs demand more money when they know a wealthy Premier League club are interested, but clearly the club can still afford to compete for transfers without the Glazers' help. Let's not forget here, United have outbid their rivals for players time and time again over the last few years, and it has been celebrated by fans as a show of power. 500,000! Now back off, you little brat. Wow, Miss Keen, that's a lot of money. For someone like you. Two million dollars! Lissandro Martinez was wanted by Arsenal, but United outbid what the Gunners could afford. Manchester City were interested in Fred, in Alexis Sanchez, and in Cristiano Ronaldo. Manchester United lured all three away from Pep Guardiola. So let's just get this clear. It's not the Glazers' fault that Harry Maguire hasn't worked out. It's not the Glazers' fault that Angel Di Maria didn't like Manchester, or that Romelu Lukaku didn't recreate his Everton form. It's not the Glazers' fault that Casemiro is starting to look his age just a year into his contract, nor is it their fault that Anthony doesn't look a good fit for English football, or that Sancho isn't explosive enough for a Premier League forward. But it is the Glazers' fault for allowing the club to waste hundreds of millions of pounds without any kind of clear plan. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results, according to Albert Einstein. And the Glazers haven't seemed to realise that a world-class recruitment team is needed to support the manager. Liverpool's first title win inside in 30 years was masterminded by Michael Edwards, who brought in the likes of Jeannie Wijnaldum, Andy Robertson and Sadio Mane. Jurgen Klopp infamously wanted Julian Brandt as his right winger. Edwards vetoed the idea to instead sign Mohamed Salah. Mauricio Pochettino's Tottenham team had Paul Mitchell working behind the scenes, the man who brought Deli Alli, Son Heung Min, Kieran Trippier and Toby Alderweireld to the club. At Arsenal now, Mikel Arteta has Edu Gaspar as his sporting director. At Newcastle, Eddie Howe has Dan Ashworth. At Aston Villa, Unai Emery has Munchi. At Manchester City, Pep Guardiola has Chiqui Bagaristain. Manchester United do not have anything close to an equivalent. United's football director John Murto has history in analysis, but not as a scout or someone directly involved in identifying talent. 
Darren Fletcher is the club's technical director after serving other roles at the club, while CEO Richard Arnold has less to do with the playing side and more to do with commercial operations at United. While most other clubs have brought in sporting directors to oversee recruitment and ease the burden of the modern day manager, United have a complete void in this area. The Red Devils plan to bring in Ralph Ranić on a consultancy basis following the Germans' interim management post ending. Ranić reneged on the deal to manage Austria. The club decided not to get a replacement. Eriksson Haag spent most of last summer pursuing Frankie de Jong, a player he worked with at Ajax. He instead signed Christian Eriksson, a former Ajax player. He also added Anthony and Lissandra Martinez, two other players he'd worked with at Ajax. He signed two Dutch players, Fout Veghorst and Tyrell Malassia, and this summer he signed two more former players, Andre Onana and Sofian Amrabat. Now, there's nothing unusual in the odd reunion here and there, but the sheer volume of players joining Manchester United who have a close connection to the manager is astounding. Most of them either know him personally or have played against his side. It certainly feels as if Ten Hag is not just the head coach of this side, but the most important man on the recruitment side too. Ten Hag has worked as a sporting director before, but that was almost a decade ago at Utrecht. It's incomparable to the job he's got to do at Manchester United. It's similar actually to the problems that Ralph Ranić faced. Ranić had spent just two years of the previous ten coaching players when he was appointed the interim coach of the club. He was a failure at Manchester United, but the people who hired him set him up for that fail. If Ten Hag is to blame for poor signings during his United tenure, that's perhaps because he's underqualified to make them. Yes, he has lots of money to sign players, but money does not guarantee success, as United have found in the past 10 years, and who, well, Chelsea are finding out right now. Asking the Glazers to invest in the squad is one thing. Asking them to refresh the infrastructure at the stadium, to keep the club competitive, even to show they care a little, is another but simply ploughing more money into Manchester United's playing squad won't get to the root of how Ten Hag is strained to carry so much more than any of his contemporaries. Last season, Brentford beat Manchester United 4-0 in just Ten Hag's second game. The Bees ran 8 miles further than Manchester United's players in that game, and as a punishment, Ten Hag made his men run 8 miles to make up for it. But Ten Hag did something incredible that day. He ran with them. He's not a professional athlete anymore but he ran over 8 miles to show his players that they were all equal in the responsibility of failure in his eyes. It helped bond the players together. They ended up having a great season, winning a trophy and qualifying for the Champions League. But who's doing the running with Eric Ten Hag in the transfer market?